For the past couple of weeks, we've been talking about the virtual realities explored through ARGs. For this presentation, I'll be talking about transmedia storytelling, those virtual realities that are created as part of the storytelling experience. The emergence of transmedia campaigns is in direct response to the new and changing ways we consume information, thanks to things like the internet, social media and mobile phones. Jeff Gomez, who has worked on a number of transmedia campaigns with companies such as Disney, Hasbro and Coca-Cola, describes how in today's interconnected world, our attention flows from our computer screens to our mobile screens to our TV screens without giving such activity a second thought. The problem has been that the stories we enjoy don't do that. They don't behave the way we've come to need them to behave. You see, traditionally, storytelling has been limited to a single medium in which the tale is told across a linear narrative. Transmedia storytelling is a multifaceted approach to telling stories that allow audiences to jump between platforms in order to build a bigger map of the overall picture. Quite often, these campaigns stem from a movie, TV show or book and are used to expand on those virtual worlds. In the book Convergence Culture, Henry Jenkins describes transmedia storytelling as those stories which unfold across multiple media platforms, with each new text making a distinctive and valuable contribution to the whole. The importance in ensuring each platform offers a differing and unique contribution to the story means that viewers aren't penalised if they don't visit a platform, but are instead rewarded with a richer viewing experience if they choose to do so. This approach allows designers to more specifically target audiences by offering a variety of touch points that are tailored to each platform's demographic rather than appealing to the lowest common denominator masses. According to Jeff Gomez, there are eight defining characteristics of a transmedia campaign. You may find some of these all will also apply to your ARGs. The first is the idea that content is originated by one or a very few visionaries. In other words, the modern day storyteller still plays an important role in ensuring the vision of the story is maintained across all platforms. Number two, it is also important to realise that cross-media rollout is planned early in the life of the franchise. In doing so, the producers are able to ensure the transmedia production is not simply an afterthought that is tacked on after the original production is released, but instead plays a part in the storytelling experience. This acknowledges the importance of each platform in the narrative. In order to establish this multifaceted world, content is often distributed to three or more media platforms. For example, this could be a movie that also has a website and a Twitter account that work in unison to tell or promote the story. Content should also be unique, adhere to platform-specific strengths, and not be repurposed from one platform to the next. In other words, each platform should offer the audience new pieces of information that help to expand the virtual reality by telling parts of the story not found elsewhere. The content should also be based on a single vision for the story world. This means that while there may be multiple platforms, they all work to tell the vision of the storyteller. A concerted effort should also be made to avoid fractures and schisms so that the story flows smoothly across each platform. If you don't, you risk bumping your fans out of the virtual world and back into reality. If you are creating a transmedia campaign, for a, say perhaps a movie or some other venture, it may also be prudent to consider how that vision will be maintained across all outputs. For example, how could the marketing be utilised to help promote the story? Finally, a successful transmedia campaign should encourage audience participation. This can include the use of web portals, social networking, or story-guided user-generated content. By encouraging users to participate, contribute, and interact with the medium, story, and other users, transmedia campaigns are able to build a more meaningful user experience. As I mentioned earlier, these principles are being increasingly applied to traditional storytelling methods such as movies, TV shows and books. Not only do they allow storytellers to expand on the world they are creating, they allow franchises to build a meaningful relationship with audiences. This is often achieved by increasing anticipation before an event, building loyalty throughout the event and prolonging user interaction after the event. As a result, the line between creative content and marketing is blurred, with many transmedia campaigns not only being used to extend the story, but to create a ready, willing and loyal audience who will continue to consume the brand. 
Two of this year's major blockbuster movies were heavily marketed through transmedia campaigns to help build excitement and, anti and anticipation with audiences. I'm guessing most people will have seen both Prometheus and The Hunger Games, and perhaps a few of you will also have participated in the transmedia campaign. We've been talking a lot about ARGs that target your sci-fi and Comic-Con fans. Prometheus is a great example of how this same audience can be targeted via transmedia. The campaign was launched in February this year with the release of a TED Talk by mogul Peter Wayland, the fictional character from the movie whose company, Wayland Industries, as well as his last name, would be easily recognised by fans of the Alien franchise. Set in 2023, the video establishes the theme for the virtual world of Prometheus, a world in which the Whalen Corporation is a leader in space exploration and the search for other worlds. This is a great example of how content should adhere to the platform's strengths. TED Talks are all about promoting the ideas and thoughts of industry leaders, and if this was 2023 and Peter Whalen was real, he would most likely be giving this exact speech. This was also the first time a fictional TED Talk has been given. This helped to immediately generate interest with the video soon going viral and fans checking out the official Wayland Industries website. This website was incredibly realistic and offered fans everything you would expect from a futuristic space exploration company, including facts about the company, its products, and even career opportunities to join Wayland Industries. Again, this helped to establish the virtual reality by maintaining the idea that Wayland Industries was real. I think it's also important to note how this website was continually updated with content as it was released on other platforms. This ensured that the audience interest didn't wane and that people were able to keep up to date about the other platforms available in the campaign. One of the other attention-drawing acts of this campaign occurred at a WonderCon convention a few weeks later. During a Q&A being held with the Prometheus cast, fans were given business cards for Wayland Industries with a web address and phone number. This part of the campaign chose its audience well, with people immediately calling the number. When they did, they were greeted with a message apologising that all the lines were busy, but asking them to check their phones for a text message that had just been sent. This text provided a link to a new Wayland Industries video, which very quickly became viral as fans spread the word. By choosing to launch this note of the campaign at WonderCon, Prometheus ensured the viral spread of this information by what you might consider die-hard fans. It also helped to generate publicity via word of mouth between its fans as they shared the clips, blogged about the stunt, and connected with other potential fans. Such tactics were employed throughout the campaign to ensure the viral spread of information, which in turn helped to build interest in and drive traffic to the various platforms of the transmedia campaign. Among those other platforms utilised during the campaign were a central website called Project Prometheus, which acted as a link to the various platforms and promoted the movie itself, an official YouTube account which featured even more videos building up the virtual world of Prometheus and promoting the movie, real world advertisements such as this one which was featured in the Wall Street Journal and coincided with a video about the movie's resident android, David, a Facebook page which provided updates about the movie, platforms as well as fan content such as fan art while also allowing fans to interact with the franchise and each other and a Twitter account also used to generate conversations about interactions with fans. The interesting thing to note about this movie, and it is something you will find in other transmedia campaigns, is the way in which certain mediums are used to create a virtual world, while others are used to allow fans to talk about and respond to those platforms. For Prometheus, the videos, Wayland Industry website and physical content all promoted the virtual world. However, other platforms such as the social media and Project Prometheus website were utilised as an opportunity for fans to learn about and discuss the movie outside of this reality. The decision allowed the campaign to target both the diehard fans who love to get involved in the story world as, the, as well as those more casual observers who aren't willing to put in as much effort but like to see a few posts in their newsfeed. It also provided fans with a central medium in which they could congregate to discuss the campaign and share their own responses, which again helps to promote the story. The Hunger Games has a transmedia campaign that I personally got very excited about this year. 
Based on the books by the same name, the movie release was the first of the franchise aimed primarily at young adults, although much like Twilight, this audience includes your not-so-young adults. Because the movie was based on an already popular series of books, the campaign had a built-in audience before it even started. However, this also meant the campaign had to be careful to stay true to the original vision of the books, otherwise they would have risked upsetting fans. For those of you who haven't been acquainted with the movie or books, the basic narrative centres around a future post-apocalyptic society known as Pan Am. The world has a rich and colourful capital, but also has 12 working slums known as the districts. From these districts, each year a young male and female is chosen to fight it to the death in what is called the Hunger Games. The transmedia campaign built on this world and invited the audience to become citizens of Pan Am. There are several sites that support this virtual reality and allow the audience to interact with each other and participate in capital life. The Capital PM is one of these sites. It acted as an information terminal where the citizens of this imaginary world could keep up to date. Like in Prometheus, this website was somewhat of a central hub in which visitors could access links to all the platforms that made up the campaign. It also provided an entry point into this world by allowing people to register to become a citizen, which will involve being given an ID card, a job, and appointed to one of 12 districts. From here, people were able to visit and follow a specific Facebook page for their district. Utilising the social nature of Facebook, the page allowed users to interact with each other in character and be kept up to date about other platforms within the campaign. In keeping with the virtual world established, the page also allowed people to nominate for higher positions within their district, such as the district recruiter, mayor, stylist and a journalist, which they were voted in by other members. Those players elected into such positions were then encouraged to become creators who corresponded with other citizens and were invited to make appearances at specific events and ceremonies. In doing this, the campaign encouraged users to not only interact with each other within the virtual world, but contribute to the content, in turn helping to drive user interaction. Again, these are great examples of playing up to each platform's strength. The website had a sense of authority and made the virtual world of Pan Nam more plausible for players to join in. While the Facebook accounts allowed people to socialise in this world through a platform most of them were already involved in. There was also an in-theme website allowing users to immerse themselves in the virtual world at the capital, aptly called the CapitalTour.pn. The site was interactive and allowed users to mimic the journey of the movie's main characters and catch the train into the capital where they were able to learn more about the city's life. It also provides exclusive content including an official address from the president and a central scene from the movie. This platform really helped to extend the virtual world and gave fans the opportunity to learn more about the movie's character before, they, um, before the release. The campaign also utilised Tumblr, creating a magazine known as Capital Couture, an ode to fashion in the capital. Again, the site provided users with original content that helped build the virtual reality and gave them incentives to create their own content in response. The, play, the page played to the strengths of Tumblr, allowing users to easily follow, reblog and share their own content with the campaign and other users. One of my favourite things about this particular site was how real world content, such as the haute couture of fashion shows, were reblogged as content from the fiction capital. They also had how-tos so that the fans could recreate the capital fashion. Further extending this world and encouraging user-generated content was the campaign's YouTube feed. The site not only posted exclusive content from the movies and behind the scenes, it also provided a feed on its page of those videos submitted by fans. By giving fans the opportunity to be in the spotlight, the platform encouraged users to become creators. This in turn helped to spread the world of um, the campaign by increasing the amount of Hunger Games content being featured and shared on YouTube and across other mediums. To ensure that the online content didn't just cater to those diehard fans who wanted to join the virtual world of the capital, the campaign also included real-world Facebook and Twitter accounts. Like the other social media platforms, the site encouraged user interaction, but instead focused on providing content about the movie and its stars. 
The advantage of having these accounts meant that not only was the campaign able to target a wider audience, but in the months following the release of the movie, both of these pages were able to continue to encourage user interaction and ensure a suitable level of excitement was maintained for the release of the DVD and subsequent movies. Both of these campaigns are great examples of how a traditional narrative can be expanded on throughout a transmedia campaign. In relation to the ARGs for this assignment, they should help provide some inspiration on how you can manipulate different platforms to work to your own story's advantage.